hi, it's David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium and I am actually back doing a video blog. Yes, I'm in my new greenhouse and let's have a look round. Okay, well I think I highlighted last time realistically um, the amount of extra space just having this two and a half foot or about 90 centimetres extra width is really remarkable. Um, I've got an extra four foot of length as well, uh, which is made just monumental difference to what I can get in the greenhouse and enabling me to really move about. But one of the key things of course is this, so I've got my workbench back in the glass house just as I did where we used to live, as, I, as you see in my previous videos. Uh, but it's brilliant, everything is fantastic. Got room to move, room to work, got a nice solid floor, and everything is brilliant. Now obviously at this time of year, there's a, a great deal to be doing. Uh, we need to be thinking forward to the autumn, and if you've got plants outside, you need to be thinking about bringing them in now. Certainly in the southern half of the UK, southern half of England, the weather is being relatively kind. It's actually been quite dry, very much unlike September of last year, when it really was very wet. Um, this year it's been really quite dry and in fact next week, I'm actually filming this on the 9th of September, uh, but next week they're, they're saying that there's actually going to be a mini heat wave. Um, it's going to get really warm up in the mid to high 20 centigrade. Uh, and so, I mean, it's ideal conditions really for keeping the plants growing that you've got inside. But in general, we need to be thinking about bringing, bringing any plants that you normally keep outside during the summer that you want to overwinter back into the greenhouse. Now, I've actually done a few accompanying videos to this. And one is sort of how to clean up uh, really big plants that you may have outside that you want to overwinter. And one that I've done is this large plant, this is a, of a Stella Robin Louise, one of my own varieties, um, that has grown on and I want to get this to become a really big plant. Now talking about bigger plants, one of the problems that I've had is that they take an awful long time to get going in the summer. Uh, Stadburn is a good example of that. And so what I'm actually going to do this year, now that I've got a bit more room, Obviously I realise not everybody's got a great deal of room, but I'm not going to cut these back anything like as much as I normally do. I'm going to keep them bigger um, in order to provide some bushiness. I may just give them a little bit of a trim at the top, uh, but certainly plants like this Stadburn, I cut that back really hard and I had all sorts of problems. This didn't really get to any decent size till like late July, August time. Uh, and that was really disappointing. So I'm not going to cut that back hardly at all. I'm going to see how it goes during the winter, keeping it relatively big. Uh, but this is lovely and clean now, not a mark on it. Uh, we need to think about what's in there because one of the problems that I've had this summer, um, I have seen many, many vine weevil. Um, I'll see a little picture here now. I'll just slip that in. I took that on my thumb. I found another one the other day. Um, and vine weevil have been a really, really big problem. Um, you don't really see what they're doing, it's the larvae that are the problem. And basically what they'll do in a big pot like this, they'll be, they'll climb along the floor, climb up the side, go into the top, and they lay their eggs just under the surface, and the larvae that emerge from those eggs crawl down uh, and basically live on the roots of your plant and they really do get quite big and they really do cause a lot of damage. So you've got to sort of either do one of two things. You've either got to completely depot the plant, completely wash the roots down. I've got a little card there to a, a clip that I've done um, probably about a year ago showing you how the process I go through of root washing. But you don't always need to do that. And with these, I actually did um, use a, a root insecticide 
uh, to wash this through, uh, which is very important to do because there's clearly in this area that I'm in many, many vine weevil about. So they're the chief culprit of root problems. The other one, of course, is mealybug, which I've spoken about many times before. Um, seems to be a, a real, real problem that is occurring perhaps in the south of England. Ian Anderson, one of our, our other main exhibitors and the treasurer of the uh, Pelagonium Society, speaks about um, the problems he's having with mealybug in the, uh, the autumn edition of the Pelagonium News. So that's worth a read, uh, but it's clearly affecting a good number of growers, certainly in the southern half of England. So. Uh, mealy bug is clearly a problem as well. And that was one of the other issues, of course, with uh, the plants that I had outside, the little pot plants. They do only really uh, sort of grow and survive during the warmer period. So they're at their worst probably April, May through to about now, September, October. They're very quiet during the winter. They don't grow. But they prefer uh, very warm, humid conditions, which, of course, they get in the UK. Uh, during the summer um, so you know that that's the problem with mealy bug now there were some plants that I bought in I obviously tapped the pot off all of them just to have, inspect the roots the root balls and a few of them were clear I would say probably about 10% of my plants were clear obviously very dependent on where they were in the garden I think um, and I've actually repotted um, a plant here uh, just a general sort of repot and I've got a video of that which I'll uh, run through now and just um, talk over it. It's a relatively straightforward process, it's just involved cutting a bit of the root off. Uh, this is one of my seedlings that hasn't actually got a name but I did this one yesterday and filmed it. Uh, so I'll run through that now and uh, just show you what I did. It's only a very basic repot but it's something you can do at this time of year just involves trimming back a bit of the root and repotting. Now the good thing of course about having uh, generally good weather in September is that the plants are continuing to grow, uh, especially after repotting, because really you want a good spell of warmer weather after repotting, because you want those roots to uh, get out into the compost. Regarding sort of stopping and things like that, many people do an autumn stop uh, at this time of year. If you're looking to maybe clip your plants back uh, it's important to do if you particularly if you've got you know slight room issues uh, now one of the problems that I've got particularly with things like my regals is that I stop I like to stop for show in December um, I've always had this issue as many people anybody that follows me knows um, so I've had to take a fair number of risks in stopping my plants now cutting them back, trimming them back. I've just got to hope that they can regrow enough in the sort of uh, three months or so, three and a half months that we've got until my normal stopping time. So that's what I'm hoping, um, I've got to hope that they grow through. With zonals, it's not so much a problem. Um, I have sort of cut back a good number of my zonals because I do the normal stop 18 to 20 weeks for the doubles. I've got time for them to grow on because the stopping 18 to 20 weeks is late February, early March. Slip in a bit of news. Um, we are hopeful of having another show at Fibrex Nurseries again next year. The date is the 19th of June. Uh, we can only hope that things are getting back to normal by then. We can only hope. Next year we're going back out to our normal third weekend. Fibrex can accommodate us that weekend. Uh, so um, look out for details about that. Uh, in the PAGS News magazine and on the uh, the website. Okay, so let's uh, just have a little look around then to see what's going on. I can show you some things that I have been doing. I actually got some really sort of mature plants from Fibrex. I bought uh, a couple of their selections that they do and they provided really good plants really long uh, really big plants with very very long stems on them and what I thought oh I know what I can do here I can do some standards and so I mean this is a plant called Willowbrook it's a dwarf and I immediately knew that I could get some standards from these great long stems from these large uncut back plants that they were sending out and that's brilliant I, I've got a good number of there they're going to need a little bit of training. 
Uh, these are a lot of my uh, younger cuttings, but having an upper shelf, if I, as I've said, uh, an upper shelf is fantastic because it enables you to keep all your young plants, little plants, small potted plants, miniatures and the like. Uh, you can get them away from your, from your main benches uh, and enable them just to accommodate, as we see down here, to just accommodate, you know, your main, your larger pots. These are the two standards that I've done videos for and you've seen the history of them as they've developed. They are looking pretty good now and I'm hopeful that I'm going to get, that I'm going to get a fairly decent plant of these next year. Um, they, they've not been repotted, they've just been sort of root inspected and clean. They didn't have any sort of bugs or mealy bug or mealy bug mess in them. They have been watered through with a, a drench insecticide. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're not looking too bad. This one I did give a stop to the other day because it had a couple of wayward branches. And stopping is always important if you get really strong wayward branches growing out on one side. Don't be afraid to uh, to crop it back and just shape it up. Because it's, it's a ball that you're always wanting to uh, attempt to achieve. Don't always have to be perfect. We look down here. This here is one of my regals. Uh, and I've just grown this as a great long standard. Uh, it's really higgledy-piggledy. I will probably have a vague attempt to try and to, um, straighten it up. But if anybody that follows my videos over a number of years, you will see I used to have a huge regal. And this is one of my own plants. This is Gosbrook Firecracker. Fantastic bloom, really striking bloom, I think. But uh, I wanted to get another wacky, sort of gnarled up um, standard. And that one's doing quite well. It's not grown huge this summer. Primarily because, of course, I've had uh, limitations in being able to look after them. But it survived this summer and uh, I've got it through. I did repot that one. So I'm quite pleased it's done quite well. Now these regals you can see here, these have all been cut back. They're just beginning to break in there. Um, I can only hope that they do sprout through enough for me to stop them uh, in December. Everybody knows that I like growing Florabundas. Uh, we've got Gosbrook Susanna here, which is, is not too bad. That's done quite well. Um, I've grown that very much as a, uh, as a Florabunda. It does need potting up, though. It's only in a five-inch pot. But um, something a bit different um, is Stadburn. We've got a, a lovely Stadburn over here. That's what it will eventually look like. Um, it's a really nice plant and I want to grow Stadburn as a Floribunda. Now it's a little bit longer jointed so what, I, what you've got to do with longer jointed plants is always keep hacking them back uh, and these have been really cropped down. They are beginning to break so they're doing everything that I want them to do. Um, and you know i'm i'm hopeful that i can grow these in eventually into a six inch pot to grow as a fairly decent floribunda burns country is another really lovely plant that i have actually seen over the years grown as a fantastic floribunda and i'm aiming to do that with this plant uh very dark leaf very dark medallion bronze deep bronze medallion in the center of the dark leaf and i think that would look fantastic as a floribunda grown as a bigger pot plant now one or two uh, lovely plants i've got hold on as part of the uh, white collection from fibrex nurseries uh was this plant of vectis snow i've been wanting to get hold of this for a few years actually Lovely plant bred uh, years ago by the uh, by the Brian West dynasty. Brian West, fantastic stellar um, breeder from the Isle of Wight. This was one of his plants, and this is lovely. I love this plant, Vectis Snow. And I'm really pleased that I got hold of that. That is being done as a standard over here. I'm, again, it was a long jointed plant. Yeah, I'm hopeful that I can get a standard of it. Uh, another plant having a go as a standard, Sunridge Moonlight. And I've actually got one of those in bloom. This is Sunridge Moonlight down here. I uh, really love this plant, lovely bloom. 
white, just large single white blooms, just edging to pink. Um, but uh, that's a really light gold leaf plant. Another one, Vivian, that I bought from Fibrex. This was just released this year. Uh, this is a single, you can see the clear difference between the single and the tight double of Vectis Snow. Uh, but this is a gold leaf variety. But the good thing about this bloom for a single, it holds its petals very well uh, and holds them quite a length of time which is very good so I'm having a single go I'm having a go at growing uh, one of those as a standard as well I've got a couple of those uh, one over there and another one next to this one here a few of the larger plants that I have bought in as I've said I am not intending to cut these back too much colored leaves varieties one of these is called Clevedon. Uh, this is an older variety, this one. Sophie Dumeresque. Uh, it's very old, quite an old variety now, but lovely yellow tricolour, golden tricolour. That one's called Clevedon. Um, the interesting thing about that is that my wife and I like going down to Clevedon. That's not too far away from us. No idea who bred that, but uh, it's got a lovely sort of large single red bloom. Uh, but uh, yeah, so interesting gold leaf variety, very strong growing. Uh, and I brought all of these in again. They've all been root cleaned. This is the the large um, variegated version of Mr. Wren. You can see the bloom here clearly. Uh, it's not done as well as I had hoped. I think primarily because I was growing it up a, a quite a dark, a north facing wall. I've got two of them, that's the larger of the two, that's two um, planting together. And here's my trained one. They haven't grown as much as I had hoped. Uh, but they are, they are going, I think they just need a bit more light to really ensure that they get going. Uh, and grow on they probably grow better next year may need a repot we'll have to think about that and you can see down this end i've also got uh this one is prince of orange and that's more or less stayed as it is i did repot that one this corner i've got a fair number of cuttings uh, i've done cuttings I'm able just to take cuttings and they are rooting in a greenhouse without having to add any bottom heat to them. Okay, so there we are. Um, I've just sort of shown you through a quick run through of what we're doing. If you want to have a look at root washing, as I say, I've done a link, I'll put it up again, uh, just so that you can see there and have a look at that. If you really want to undergo doing root washing, Having the bench though is enabling me to do some good demonstrations. I'll hopefully do some uh, other bits and pieces in the uh, coming weeks uh, to get out and show you everything that's going on in the autumn period uh, for Belagonium lovers. So in the meantime, keep safe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now. Please subscribe to this channel and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can follow Mr. Pelagonium on both Twitter and Instagram under Mr. Pelagonium and you can follow the Pelagonium and Geranium Society on Facebook or you can visit the PAGS website at thepags.org.uk.